In the screencast, we're going to talk about understanding Android build variants. So let's talk a little bit about Android build variants. What really are they? Well, this really isn't a build variant here. This is actually a VW build variant. Um, so you can actually think of it as a variant of a different type of car. But we're not here to talk about cars. We're here to talk about Android build variants. So let's really talk about what they are. Now, build variants in Android, they allow us to quickly create different versions of our application from the same source code. And the reason we're, the word kinda is present here is because that's kind of the truth. We can create different versions of our app from the same source code, but sometimes there's little changes that we need to make inside of the source code so that we can get these different types of variants built. And someone might be asking, why would I want a different type of build variant? And there may be the case that you have one application and it works uh, a particular way when you release it on Google Play, app store, on the Google Play Store, but it may work a completely different way because of limitations to another app store, such as the Amazon App Store. Now, you may be releasing specifically for a Kindle device on the Amazon App Store, and you may be releasing for all types of devices on Google Play. Uh, you may need to use Google Play services when you're running inside of Google Play. Those same services may not be available to you in other app stores. And so you may need to strip that functionality. You can have ifs and all these different types of things littered throughout your code, or you can use build variants uh, and the build variant system to help you create different composable pieces of your application. And what they do, these build variants, is they allow us this flexibility, they allow us to create these different versions of our applications so they're very flexible and we can get them done uh, very quickly. You could do this previously inside of Maven, but it required a bunch of hoops you had to jump through in the build system to replace files and so forth, just a real pain. So at the end of the day, what these build variants that we're working with allow us to do are create uh, different applications. So it's basically a composable aspect uh, for the Android build system within the Android uh, ecosystem that allow us to create different applications. So before we really get hopping into a lot of code, because this is a very code heavy uh, presentation here, it's good to note that the code is located on GitHub slash, it's github.com slash caster IO. And what you'll notice is when we get into the code, every time we get to a portion of the code where I'm going to show you an example, you're going to see, as you see on the screen here, it says branch debug suffix. And that means that inside of the caster IO, full inside of the caster IO site, which is the project's called Wicked Cool, there will be a branch in there with this name called debug suffix. So you can actually check out that code and run the same example that I see here today. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example of how we're going to go ahead and create a debug package. Okay, now I'm back inside of Android Studio. You can see we have the Android project open. I'm using the project structure view. I do not like the Android view. I feel that it lies to you here. Uh, we're not seeing the actual file structure. Scripts are moved into, uh, stacked on top of each other. It just doesn't make sense to me. I choose to use the, the project structure view here, which is why it may look a little different than yours look. So if, if that's the case, please select the drop down and select project. Now inside here is just a simple, this is actually just a very simple application that I generated from the file, new project wizard, and went through the new project wizard and asked it to give me a project with a navigation drawer and some fragments. And that's about it. So if you were to walk through that same exact project, what you would end up with is almost the exact same thing that I have here. And so what we're going to talk about today is how we can actually add the suffix, uh, debug suffix to the end of the package name inside of an Android build system using the Android build variants. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the build.gradle file inside of this application. Now that we have the build file open, we actually see the various components inside of here. Now, we're not going to run through all of the implementations of this is how a build file is, is constructed. There's a few videos on the internet of, of showing you how, how these are constructed and what the groovy language, which is, which is behind Gradle, uh, is doing. And so I uh, won't we'll be explaining all of that at this time. So what we actually are interested in at this point in time is line 14, we have a build types line. And this build type has two different uh, basically settings inside of it. And one is release setting and one is a debug setting. So we have two different build types in here. One's release and one is debug. Uh, release has some minify enabled for some ProGuard stuff and a default ProGuard file location. Uh, but we're worried right now about the, de the debug build type. And the debug build type has an application ID suffix. The application ID is actually the package name of the Android application. And what we're basically saying here is, hey Android, when you build this application, uh, when we run Gradle 
so for example, Great Olu Assemble, it's going to build both build types at once. It's going to build the release version and it's going to build the debug version. And for the debug version, when you build that, I want you to go ahead and hop into the Android manifest and I want you to add dot debug for us. Go ahead and add dot debug to the end of the suffix and then we can go ahead and view that. Now, important thing to note about build variants inside of Android Studio, when we're working with an application in Android Studio and we perhaps hit the run button up here or we create a run configuration, we can only run one build variant at a time. We can't build many different types. Uh, if you want to know where the build variants are at, it's going to be on the left-hand side here in the build variants panel. So what we can see here is here, it's going to dismiss this unit test notification here. And we have an, one application and the current build type that's selected is debug. So right now when I run this, I'm going to actually be executing this code path here. It's going to create and run the debug version. Now if I want to actually run and install a different version, I can select the drop down list here and select release and now release this, build, this code path will now be executed. In the future episodes, I'm going to show you how we can actually create different folders for release and debug and then those different implementations are going to be used during the build time. Right now, let's go back to debug. One thing that I'm going to show you here shortly is as soon as we build this, I'm going to hop into the command line. I'm going to use the Gradle Lou command. So that's the built-in Gradle Lou wrap, the Gradle wrapper, and we're going to build the application. I'm going to use the assemble command, and the assemble command is going to build the release and debug version. So I can show you what it looks like on the file system, and then we can inspect it with the AAP to, AAPT tool to, inspect, to take a look at the package information inside of the built APK. So let's go ahead and hop over to the terminal now so I can show you how we can build it. Okay, we're now inside of the terminal. Let's go ahead and take a, take a look at all of our files inside of here. So we can see we have our git files, our, our app directory here. We have the Gradle folder, etc. And then we have the Gradle Lou uh, shell script. And what I'm actually going to do is just go ahead and run uh, Gradle Lou assemble. And let's go ahead and let this run. It's going to take a minute to run. And what the Gradle Lua assemble command is going to do, it's going to walk inside of all the projects that are inside of here, which we only have one at this time. And it's going to build all of the build flavors inside of there and the build variants. So if we have multiple versions, say we have 10 different build variants, it's going to build them all. We could actually tell it to just build one. For example, if we just wanted the debug version, we would say Gradle Lua assemble debug. But right now we've told it to build everything. Now, as you can see, we've ex everything has gone through and executed successfully here. And we can actually hop inside to take a look at the files. So if we take a look at all of our files here, we'll see that we have, we're going to go inside the app folder, and then we're going to see we have a build folder. Now this build folder is what was created by Gradle, and this is where all of the build artifacts are uh, created and dropped into. So this is where we're going to find our APKs. So let's go inside of build. And if we look inside of here, we're going to see we have a couple of them, generated intermediates outputs. We're interested in the outputs folder. Look in here, we see we have a couple of ones. There's an APK folder. So we're going to APK. And then we're going to look inside of here. And we have a few files in here. We have the app debug unaligned APK. We have the app debug APK, the app release unsigned, AP, unsigned APK, and then a couple of manifest merger debug reports. So these are just some reports that Gradle drops in there for some of the manifest merging, which we will talk about a little bit later in a future episode. Now we're interested in this app debug file here. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the Android manifest has had its package name updated to include a dot debug suffix at the end of the package name. Now how are we going to do that? This is an APK. Thankfully the Android tools team has given us the AAPT tool and we can run a command against this debug file to inspect the internals of the APK. And so let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to run AAPT, dump, Badging, and the badging information is the information that we're going to find inside of the Android manifest file. So let's go with dump badging and provide that path to the file, apk debug apk. And now we see I hit enter, we have a whole bunch of information that's spewed out to us. I'm going to scroll and scroll to the top. And it's actually going to give us our package information here, right on this line right here. Uh, and then we can actually see the name of the package, io.caster.wickedcool.debug version code 1, 1.0. And etc. And we have all the other information inside of here as well. But what we're interested in is this little piece here. We wanted to make sure that the debug suffix was added to the package name, and it looks like that it was. Let's scroll to the bottom. 
Now, maybe I want to verify that that didn't show up in the release version. Remember, we also have the release files in here as well. It's unsigned because we haven't signed it with any key stores or anything like that. But we can run the same command on it as we did before. But instead of the debug one, we'll go for the release one. So let's scroll to the top of this one where we just executed it. And we can see on this line here that we are missing the dot debug suffix. So the dot debug suffix was only added to the debug build type. And so this is a very simple example of how Android provides you this simple functionality directly right out of the box when you create a new Android application. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to get into how you can actually work with and rename your application and start doing more and deeper things with the build types, such as creating different build variants, executing different code paths, and so forth. Until next time.